Small is beautiful, and uh, building an accelerator on a chip sounds like it's impossible. But we combine the tools of the semiconductor industry with modern lasers and can build a laser-driven accelerator in a transparent dielectric. And our results are showing that very high promise for this approach. It's really a revolutionary approach. We're sort of on the threshold of where particle accelerators can go in the future. The accelerator on a chip offers opportunities for doing new types of science. From medicine to industry, this could open up a plethora of new areas of research that we haven't even thought of yet. My name is Peter Hommelhoff. I'm a professor of physics at Erlangen University, and I'm together with Bob Bayer, the co-initiator and co-principal investigator of the A-Chip collaboration, the Accelerator on a Chip International Program. This program is funded by the Betty and Gordon Moore Foundation, and it's enabled us to do a nearly impossible but very important task of building the world's smallest accelerator. We have roughly 80 scientists from eight universities and three national labs and two companies, all spread over five countries and three different continents. It's mostly young scientists, PhD students, but of course also staff scientists and professors. The students uh, in the program are really the lifeblood of the program. It's really great to be working on a project that's uh, so ambitious. It's a very large community and everybody is very supportive and I really think we're doing something important that can advance science. There are no lab barriers in this work. I mean, my student works in, in the lab of Bob Bayer and it's a, it's a really uh, very cohesive and, and uh, um, and, and friendly group of people and researchers who are all working jointly towards uh, um, this very exciting goal. Recently we just completed the first experimental verification of a laser coupled to the chip with waveguides. The waveguides coupling the light to an accelerator and that accelerator was built by inverse design principles. You use powerful computer optimization algorithms to search through the whole parameter space of all of the possible devices that could be fabricated. And you design them for whatever function you would like to have in and whatever role you would like to have. And now that we have experimental results and, and uh, we're all becoming impatient about improving things and combining them together so that we could really see the whole accelerator you know, in action. <laughs> the conventional model for large accelerator facilities is you, you build this, uh, this giant facility, um, it sits in one location and people come in from all over the world in order to uh, use the particle beams or the x-rays or other things that are provided there as tools for scientific discovery. So if you could make uh, smaller and more compact versions of those that could be used in a university setting, then some of those experiments um, could be done locally instead of having uh, people come in to use a large facility from elsewhere. If these accelerators were in your laboratory, you would find science that you can do that you can't do in any other way. And so we're working on that aspect now. We're working on the details of, of the accelerator, the source of the electrons, the bunching of the electrons, the acceleration of the electrons, all are being developed such that you can build them using the lithography on a chip, on a wafer. I generally work in electron optics. In order to make a long accelerator, it's important that the electron beam stays within the accelerator. So I build the uh, magnetic optics in order to transport the beam down the length of the accelerator. And it was recently published in Physical Review Letters on uh, experimental electron optics. Uh, we really think will help push this project forward. We need excellent electron optics, excellent timing between electrons and laser fields just because we drive the accelerator with femtosecond laser pulses. That means the femtosecond electron pulses and the femtosecond laser pulses have to arrive at the same time in a tiny dimension in space. Beam steering and focusing are essential to get the electrons into the channel of the nanostructure. If we don't do that precisely, we will lose all electrons in this very long, narrow channel. As part of my thesis work, uh, we developed the first silicon-based dielectric laser accelerators and were able to produce accelerating gradients about an order of magnitude higher than are achievable in conventional uh, radio frequency accelerators, so we we're very excited about that. And what we've been working on recently is we're scaling that 
um, towards uh, multi-stage accelerator devices and working on micro-bunching and also integrating uh, the sub-relativistic silicon-based accelerators with a compact electron source uh, to produce our goal of the MEV scale uh, accelerator device. My dream for a long time has been that we could build an accelerator that fits on a tabletop followed by a, a dielectric undulator that converts electrons to x-rays and we can literally build on the tabletop a coherent x-ray source for future science applications. It's breathtaking to see what a team of international scientists can accomplish within such a limited amount of time. We really go from the proof of concept experiment to a demonstration device and I believe that within two years we really have the accelerator on a chip. That is fascinating to see.